a coin collector sent almost an entire roll of Jefferson nickels to PCGS. What did they get back? My name is Daniel and you are watching Coin Help You. Thanks for watching my latest video. If you need help with a coin, go to Coin Help You Community. Links in the description of this video and a pinned comment. If you want to buy coins from us, PorchmanCoinShop.com. Link is in the description and a pinned comment of this video. So let's take a look at what happened, what results that they got from sending in what coins that they thought were really nice and thought because they were in original roll, they had to be high grade. So this was a roll from Denver, Colorado, Denver U.S. National Bank. And it's an older roll, as you can see. It's got that real thick ends. And they sent the coins off because they were 62 Ds and they thought, man, if they're in an original roll, they've got to be, basically what you hear people say, pristine. They have to be high grade, full steps. I mean, they're original, right? Never been searched. Well, that is not the case because coins like this were intended for circulation, not for collectors, not for putting in uh, holders, not to be in great shape. A lot of them can have dye deterioration. A lot of them can have issues and marks and they were mishandled, the, the planchets were. So it doesn't matter what role they're in, how old they are, how long they've been stored. It doesn't mean coins are worth sending off for grading. It doesn't matter what a YouTube channel says. I'm here to tell you I do this for a living and most rolls, most coins out there, 97% of them should never be sent to PCGS. Maybe I'm 90% is a little high, but I'm talking about just circulated coins and rolls like this. There's just very few that you're going to find in a roll that's going to be worth money. Mint sets is another thing. Same coins, they just package them in mint sets. They didn't really take care of them. They didn't handle them like they do today. So the quality control was not there. They were just put in circulation. No one really thought people was going to collect the 1962 nickels, so they didn't take care of them. They minted them in the millions, hundreds of millions. So they're very common. So what they did was they end up getting these different grades that none of them were full steps. They've got 65 and 65 and basically coins that in a holder. So they've got a bunch of 65s in this and some 64s. Uh, they got some 63s, you know, and then here's some of them that aren't sent off. They didn't send them off yet. So not only did they get low grades of 63, which is still a mint state coin, they actually got one with a wheel mark on details. So just because the coins in a roll unsealed does not mean that it wasn't didn't go through a counting machine. A lot of uh, the rolling of the coins is outsourced by the U.S. Mint, so they go through other hands. Sometimes they're ordered from the bank, and they'll order them from the feds and you can get sometimes circulated coins in rolls you think's BU. Sometimes you can get different dates. So there's no guarantee any roll has anything special in it. Now that's what happens when you find that uh, rolls of coins or coins that you know have been backed by uh, sent or put back by your grandpa or grandma or aunt or uncle or dad or mom and they've been sealed for years and they got a bank on them. You know, those coins are just mishandled. They're, that's just they're not worth sending off for grading. You're going to have to go through and do bulk submissions and it's going to cost hundreds, of, maybe even thousands of dollars before someone finally gets that registry set. A lot of these registry set coins, let's say for 62 and we can take a look at that. So here is the piece of just price guide, which is what we're looking at based off of the fact that they sent them to PCGS and they were trying to get these higher grades. So 280 million was minted of the 62D. So in order to get the really high grade 67, you are in a company of only one. I mean, we're talking since 1962. We're over 60 years and only one out of all of them that's minted so far, it's all that's been sent in, graded 67 and 66 plus. Now, 23 and 66, we've got 65s, but they're not worth much. And if they received full bands on their coins, then they're looking at none higher than 65, and that's $4,250. But then you need to know what full steps look like. I do have a video on that, by the way, if you'd like to check that out. It have been $100 in 63. So it would have been worth it if they had full steps. But can have a lot of contact marks, even though you'll find examples of them having contact marks on them. They're not supposed to. Now your chances of sending them off and getting the full steps that way is going to be very slim. 
So since none of them were full steps, we look at these values here. We can see that the 65 is worth 40 bucks. There was nine of those. There was a few more uh, in the 64. They're worth $12. 63 is $4. So total 30 coins was sent off. And the total cost with shipping and membership, I don't know whether they did the 169 whatever four vouchers eight vouchers it doesn't really matter because when you start adding in the shipping costs to and from the grading fees themselves i think is around 18 bucks at pcgs just the basics for modern coins but when you add it all together total it cost them about 709 dollars to send this roll off the retail value is 584 dollars if you can sell them for pcgs prices which i doubt it's gonna be very difficult because you're gonna have multiples you have duplicates i don't know if anybody's gonna pay 40 bucks for them if you go over to eBay, you can actually see that one somebody's one seller's trying to sell them for two hundred and fifty four dollars. It's not worth that. I don't know why they've got that price on it. I mean, they are a CD and member exchange. I mean, they have, they have price guides. They know they're not worth that much. And if we go to sold to see how much any of them's actually sold for, there's no record. I mean, no recent. 1962D nickel from PCGS 65 has sold. So then what about 64s and what about 63s? And you know, we can put in 64 to see. You know, you got some P mint or Philadelphia mints, which don't have the mint mark on them, which don't mean they're worth more. Just they weren't supposed to have a mint mark. 1495. 1437. So maybe you can get close to retail form if you stick them up. That says it's got a DDR on it, which I mean it does say it. It says it on the holder, but, you know, it just didn't add any value to it compared to the one it sold. So hopefully this helped you make a decision on whether you have coins worth sending off. If they would have just sent the 65s off, the ones that rated 65, and that's it, and not the rest of them, then it probably would have been worth it or at least maybe break even. Maybe they made a little bit on it. And then if they had some other coins to go with it, but like I said, there's just no guarantee. They're just so common. 280 million of these. I mean, that's a lot. Uh, 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 that's a high mintage of mishandled coins that weren't intended to be a collector's item. So anyways, thanks for watching my latest video. Please like, share, and comment. And have a great day.